There's no perfect recipe for riding over roots, but I reckon with a little bit of practice, we can all be more successful root rippers. First things first guys, bike setup, super helpful, whatever terrain you're riding, but especially when you're heading out on some rooty terrain. Generally speaking, you might want a higher tire pressure if you're riding like really packed in, faster rolling terrain, or if you're hitting a lot of jumps. That's definitely not where we're riding here, so I prefer a slightly lower tire pressure. I run on my trail bike about 19 PSI in the front, maybe 20 in the rear. If it's really wet, I might take it down a PSI or two. And don't be afraid, mess around with your tire pressures, one, two PSI, like it's actually gonna make a big difference when it comes to traction on trail. Definitely don't forget to open up your suspension. If you just got to the top of the climb, your suspension might still be locked out, but to get the best traction up and over the roots and making sure our suspension's going up and down effectively, we wanna make sure it's nice and open. We paid a lot of bucks for this fancy hardware here, so why not use it? If climbing up roots, you may want the seat up while moving forward on the nose to help keep the front end down, especially in steep terrain. However, if it's too steep, standing may be necessary to quickly power pedal over features. This requires keeping the weight centered to avoid spinning out your rear wheel in a harder gear. A good question to ask is how much momentum is needed? Is there a feature directly after the uphill routes that you need speed for? Always remember, eyes up. I remind myself of this all the time. It's absolutely crucial to make a goal to get to the top of the Rudy feature and just do it. As odd as it sounds, practicing standing and pedaling is quite important. It feels weird at first and you aren't sure how to create a powerful movement, like smashing up some roots. It's really helpful when you take it to the trails super important while climbing and descending body position on the bike. Stay dynamic so the bike can move easily underneath you. Pick where you wanna go, don't be a passenger. Keep your eyes up looking where you wanna go, ready to adjust. Keep your heels dropped so you aren't getting bounced around on the pedals. When crossing flat routes, it's a good idea to have your pedals level so you don't catch them on anything. However, if you come across a bit of an off-camber terrain, it's a good idea to maintain body-bike separation and keep good contact with tires on routes. Keeping a neutral body position so that you can move around on the bike as it goes over routes helps to avoid too much pressure on the front wheel and keeping enough pressure on your rear wheel. Making sure to hinge at the waist and keep those elbows out. Stay loose, ride don't slide. Trust that as long as the front wheel's in control and going where you want it to go, the back wheel will follow, even if it slightly slides. Unweighting the bike. A lot of people can look at it and just assume it's a bit of a jump, but unweighting the bike is when you're reducing the downforce on the tires and the bike, you're skimming over the top of the roots and you're using the roots as a takeoff to kind of jump certain sections. I like to look for safe places and rooty sections to control speed and my balance. I like to look for patches of terrain to break after the root section and control my speed. Practice feathering the brake so that at no point you're locking up and creating a skid, but rather controlling your speed. If riding in the rain is not your usual cup of tea, then there's a few things you can do to your bike to make it a little bit easier for you. First off, I would suggest a nice fat tire, super grippy compound, ultra soft if you can get your hands on it. And the bigger the knobs, the better. You're just gonna have more contact on the roots to stay in control. Next up, I would suggest letting out a few PSI in your tires. Tiny little difference, but it makes a huge gain when it comes to riding over roots. I am definitely one that's gonna set it and forget it when it comes to suspension setup. However, if this is a new thing to you, riding roots or riding wet roots anyway, you could actually benefit from a tiny bit slower rebound so that the bike tracks up and over the roots without bouncing around like a pogo stick. That was fun. We didn't only survive, we thrived and we only died just once.
Thank you guys for joining me on trail today. I had a ton of fun slipping and sliding around the roots. I hope you were picking up what I was putting down there on a couple of tips for root riding. If you've got any suggestions for some things that we can cover in the future, I'm all ears and I'm always looking for some new inspiration. Thank you.